Hi everyone, I'm Alan Nishkulnik here at Golf Tech Singapore. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm a Golf Tech certified golf coach and a Stack and Tilt certified instructor. The topic I'd like to talk about today is one that is very dear to me as it has accompanied me in my personal uh, development of my golf swing. It's the extent to which golfers backward and forward bend during their golf swing. I'll also be talking about the rates at which you'll see the very best players bend. Uh, I'll also talk about what we see on a daily basis, amateurs do incorrectly, and then finally I'll round things off with explaining to you how you can practice this at home or at the driving range. Okay, so what are we talking about when we make reference to forward and backward bending? So the way I like to see it is that the golfer is using his upper body or his upper torso as a lever. So at setup, the golfer would be bent forwards approximately 41 degrees. During the course of the backswing, the upper torso would then straighten to about zero degrees forward or backward bend. So when I take my backswing, you will see that my spine has now straightened. I'm no longer in forward bend, which would otherwise look something like this. Instead, however, I straighten my spine, I extend my spine to about zero degrees, which would then look like this. During the course of my downswing, my upper body then goes back into forward bend. And when the club is approximately parallel to the ground, my upper body is back to where it originally started in forward bend. And then in carrying out my uh, impact and moving into my follow through, that forward bend then turns into backward bend. So we can see quite clearly that during the course of the golf swing, a golfer is on a continuous basis forward bending, backward bending, then forward bending and backward bending his spine. So what is the purpose of, of bending then? Uh, I would see it as being threefold. Uh, firstly, it, it allows the golfer to increase his turns. So typically when I would look at amateurs who have issues with, with a bending, say in their backswing, and they would stay in forward bend, their turn numbers would be on the low side. So they'd be, be turning very little. And instead of blaming it on their lack of flexibility, um, what they need to learn is that the component, they need to add a, comp a backward bending component in their backswing. So it should look something like this, as opposed to staying forward bent and turning very little. Uh, secondly, and closely connected to this first purpose would be um, the fact that the backward bending lengthens your backswing and thereby creates power. Um, so very often we will see amateurs staying in forward bend, thereby limiting their backswing to a very small amount and uh, trying to then increase the length of their backswing by bending their arms. Okay, so this is a typical, a typical scenario that we'd see. Uh, and instead what should happen is um, that golfer should backward bend thereby increase the length of his backswing and reduce the necessity to bend their arms. Because bending the arms would impact on uh, the management of the radius of the swing arc um, and thereby impact on the ability of the golfer to control the lowest point of, the lowest point of his swing. And then finally, um, the third uh, purpose of uh, bending during the golf swing would be, to my mind, managing the extent to which the upper body sways off the ball or stays very centered. So typically a golfer that is very good at, at, at including uh, uh, the right amount of bending in his backswing will also demonstrate an inability to keep his head very centered as opposed to somebody who stays in forward bend excessively and would, all, would demonstrate at that same time a significant amount of, of shoulder or head sway off the ball and to the right. Okay, and your ability to keep your head centered or your upper body centered will result in improved contact when carry out the swing. So if we look at the rates at which the very best players bend during their golf swing, 
we'll see that at address, professionals would be forward bent approximately on average 41 degrees, and the hips would be forward bent 16 degrees. Then during the course of the backswing, towards the top of the backswing, professionals would move the upper body to zero degrees, and the hips would assist in this effort by reducing the forward bend to 12 degrees. Then in the downswing, the shoulders would return to 41 degrees, forward bend to ultimately in the end position, find their way to 32 degrees backward bend with the shoulders and two degrees backward bend with the hips. So it is how I, was, how I explained to you before with the lever idea. So it's forward bend, then back to upright, forward bend, and then backward bend. So it's this motion that the spine or the upper body of the golfer has to go through in order to stay centered and create the, the maximum power, amount of power during the golf swing. Okay, so I've got the motion measurement now strapped onto me. So I have a, a sensor between my shoulder blades and another sensor at the back of my hips. I'm gonna carry out two swings. The first one's gonna be one where, um, the way I would normally carry it out with the correct amount of, of uh, rates of bending in my swing. And then the second swing would be one where I would try to stay forward bent excessively. And then we would go on and look at those in, in terms of how the numbers um, compare and also from a two-dimensional perspective, you know, what my sways uh, look like, whether my head moves and shifts position during the, co uh, the course of the swing. Okay, so why don't we have a look at those two swings uh, in comparison. So on the left side, you can see um, is my before swing. It's, uh, I'm, I'm forward bent, my shoulder is forward bent 44 degrees, which is uh, just, uh, just above tour average. I've also drawn a circle around my head um, just so we can monitor any two-dimensional uh, sideways movement or sways of my shoulders during the course of my swing. And on the right side, you can see is the after swing, which we'll look at in more detail just in a second. So on the left side, moving from 44 degrees forward bent to the top of my backswing, where I'll demonstrate zero degrees backward bend, which is smack on tour average. Um, you'll also see that my, my head hasn't significantly moved out of the circle, so I've stayed very centered. Then in the course of my downswing, again, head is staying pretty centered, and my bends have moved to 33, 33 degrees backwards, which is one degree more than tour average in my end position. Comparing that to the right side, where I deliberately tried to stay in forward bend in my backswing, and interestingly, you can see that my head moves significantly to the right in that process, and also my arms start bending. And you'll see at, at position four, so uh, top of my backswing, I'm 19 degrees forward bend. Then I try to maintain my forward bend during the course of my downswing. My head moves back over the ball, but this is obviously a coordinative task to manage that and I stay in forward bend throughout my downswing and even into my end position, my finish where I'm two degrees forward bent. So you can see that that swing requires a lot of coordination because my head is basically moving from left to right quite a significant amount and also in that process my arms are bending significantly. So quite a few things to manage in order to control my low point which is it's always going to be very difficult. So instead, what I would recommend is that you incorporate the right amount of uh, backward bending in order to stay centered as, as centered as possible. Okay, so how can you practice the correct amount of backward bending or even just introducing uh, an element of backward bending into your golf swing? So one way of looking at it is somebody who stays in forward bend has his chest always pointing towards the ground, right? So if, if this shaft represented the orientation or the direction of your chest, then in someone's backswing, this shaft would be pointing down. So instead, what you need to do is, and you can, you can definitely take a, take a club like this, just place it against your sternum, take your setup, 
And if that shaft is pointing downwards in your backswing, what you need to do is lift your upper body and bend it backwards to such an extent that this shaft starts pointing up in the sky. This would, would incorporate an, amount, an element of backward bending into your swing. So rather than this shaft pointing downwards, it would have to point somewhat upwards, or at least that would be the feel that you need to incorporate. And the same would then apply in your fall down swing and into your follow through. So if in your follow through, your, this shaft tends to point downwards, what you need to do is start raising the shaft to point up in the sky um, in order to incorporate a, an element of backward bending. So just to recap, forward, bend backwards so the shaft points up, and in your downswing, we need that same idea or motion in terms of getting that shaft to point upwards. And then with the golf club, it would look something like this, shaft up, downswing, shaft up. Okay, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, give me the thumbs up uh, and also subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you for my next video. See you soon and bye-bye from Singapore.